Friends, welcome back to the Great N64 Showdown. In this, our fourth wildcard matchup, we are taking looks at Madden 2000 and 2001. As a follow-up to the previous Madden video, this matchup should also have a pretty straightforward outcome. But, I will say that having never played either game, the amount of change from 64 to 99 was surprising. Those entries were well before the series stagnated, so if you aren't familiar with the N64 Madden entries, I highly recommend you check out the previous episode before this to have a better idea of just how much progress there was from Madden 64 to 99. Please also keep in mind that we are comparing these to neither the Blitz nor NFL Quarterback Club series yet, and instead are just comparing to each other for now. Playing Madden 64 and 99, while at least novel, felt almost like a punishment. Both were very archaic in just about every way possible, the graphics for Madden 64 were poor, even for the time. The gameplay and controls in both were in their infancy as far as 3D Madden goes. And thanks to the memory limitations of the N64 cartridge, the sound effects and voiceover clips were few and far between. And it just never really felt like there was potentially any fun to be had there. And outside of getting to play with a historic Denver Broncos roster, there was no fun to be had. The only positive to come out of playing these was getting to see how EA innovated from one entry to the other, like the initial franchise mode. But outside of that, I really didn't have a good time playing either game and would honestly prefer neither of them moved on, but thankfully that's why we have the wildcard round to weed some of these out. All that being said, we are here to look into each and every game in the North American library, potential redundancies included. So let's get into it. Developed and published by EA Sports, Madden 2000 was released for the N64 on August 31st, 1999. The game was met with mostly positive reviews. Consistent across most versions, there were predominantly 8 out of 10s with the occasional 7. The highest N64 score was from GameSpot at 9.4 out of 10, while the lowest was actually from Nintendo Power at 7.4 out of 10. A fun fact I learned was this was only the second game in the series to feature anyone other than just John Madden on the cover with a blurry action shot of the GOAT himself, Barry Sanders, in the background. Speaking from a gameplay and modes perspective, I really only plan to comment on what has changed, so I won't be covering features that were carried over from the previous entry. A favorite of mine for all these late 90s and early 2000s sports games is the menu music, and while thankfully not as cheesy as Madden 64, Madden 2000 does kind of disappoint here. The bland tune on offer here really does pale in comparison to some of its contemporaries with games like Supercross 2000 or even the NASCAR series having actual music tracks for their menu music while the Madden series just kind of has this bland downbeat loop. Madden 2000 introduced the ability to simulate many of the off-season duties for franchise mode like re-signing and releasing players as well as the draft process. But it is optional, so any purists out there could still manually handle everything if they wanted. I will say this system, while obviously not as in-depth as future entries, is still very impressive to me with what they were able to pack in. Now, I was never really one to go all-in on managing the off-season moves, so the ability to simulate everything goes a long way for me. The system is very deep, and convincingly cements this entry as more simulation than arcade but not forcing it on you is the key to keeping the audience happy and to balance out the features for those that just want to play the game and either don't know or don't care about all the extracurriculars that could go into it. In franchise mode, you can create multiple coaches and, as far as I know, manage each of their teams with all the detailed options and team management features independently maintained across each, though the interface was a little clunky to get used to. Saving a franchise mode requires 123 pages of memory, which is almost an entire memory card for N64 standards. This isn't all that surprising, as I remember having games like NCAA 04 and Madden 05 take up most of an entire 8 megabyte memory card on my PS2 back in the day for Dynasty and franchise modes. The other gameplay feature or addition I want to mention is the inception of the Madden Challenge. Now, any fan of the 2000s era's Madden, NCAA, and so on might remember the different challenges and points you could get for completing said in-game challenges. You could then use those points to buy cards, and cards took on many forms. They could be cheats like advantages for you or detrimental to your opponent, or you could unlock alternate teams and stadiums. 
This feature really is a staple of the EA Sports games I remember playing as a kid, and seeing the initial employment of this feature was both fun and nostalgic for me. Jumping into the gameplay, the presentation is vastly improved compared to 99. When you started a game in 99, there was hardly any sound at all. No crowd, no music, and no commentary. Madden 2000 has all of the above. While I think the crowd noise is a little lacking and is definitely the same white noise loop as used in previous games, it is still an improvement upon the previous iteration by leaps and bounds. You have crowd noise, Pat Summerall and John Madden, and a brief updated background music track. At the time, my guess was that Madden 99 focused so much on the improved visuals that the sound department was an unfortunate casualty, at least for the N64 version. And not to jump too far ahead, but the ROM file sizes for 99 and 2000 are a hundredth of a megabyte different. So the improvements in 2000 are almost completely to the credit of EA handling the technology of the N64 better versus EA sacrificing profit margin for a larger cartridge size. The overall controls and mechanics feel very smooth, but there is a lot of work to be done to memorize and master each combination for both pre- and post-snap options. This is not at all a gripe as it is a very deep and involved system that greatly benefits the gameplay, but there are a lot of button combinations that may take newer players some time to memorize. The gameplay flows smoothly and even better than 99. I don't feel like the performance hinders anything here like it constantly did with 64 and even still some with 99. The play selection is much more varied and easier to navigate as well, so you get an increase in quality and quantity here. My only gripe is that on 4th down, the play selection still doesn't default to special teams like it does later in the series. So you lose precious time off the clock in crunch situations by having to manually scroll to the special teams formation. One other thing of note is the game has a setting that provides situational hints and instructions. So if you're kicking a field goal for the first time, you'll get a rundown on how to control the direction and such. No These come up in a wide variety of scenarios suggesting things like audibles, line shifts, press coverage, and they are pretty useful overall for a new player. Now let's talk about the visuals. Player proportions are kinda odd as they are all a bit too short and wide still, but the models look decent enough. They are an improvement over 99 and better than I expected. The logos on the helmets are visible enough to recognize, and most importantly, the animations and player speed are much improved over 99 as well. The visuals on the field are pretty crisp, but I can't tell that they've improved any, and honestly, they look well enough that I would be content if they didn't change from here to Madden 2002 either. But the stadiums are still pretty lacking and haven't improved much from 99 as far as the overall features and detail. The crowd and signs may be less blurry, but not well enough that I can outright praise them. It looks even worse at night with the pitch black background. It's never been as off-putting during a day game as the blue background is tolerable and passes for a skybox, but the black background for night games doesn't have any character to it and it just looks like this football field is sitting in the middle of some sort of void. They probably could have factored in some clouds or some grays here and there to really paint the illusion of a night sky. As for the sound, this is once again an improvement over 99. One of the main gripes about the presentation of 99 was the total lack of fanfare or any sound at all upon starting a game. As I mentioned earlier, 2000 fixes this in full. The player and crowd noises seem mostly the same, but there is much more commentary to liven things up. Overall, Madden 2000 impressed me with how deep the in-game play mechanics and franchise modes were. The visuals were dramatically improved from 99, which had already improved from 64, and the overall presentation was a lot livelier than 99 as well. So let's see how 2001 compares, shall we? Of course, also developed and published by EA Sports, Madden 2001 featured Eddie George on the cover and was released for the N64 on September 7, 2000. This edition of the series was also met with mostly positive reviews, and the average N64 score was slightly higher than that of its predecessor. The highest N64 score was again from GameSpot at 9.1 out of 10, while the lowest came from IGN at an 8 out of 10. As expected, the menus get a facelift, and the menu music, while more upbeat, is just another bland loop of about 10 seconds or so.
Madden 2001 also introduced Madden cards, which are an evolution of the Madden challenges added in the previous game. These also give you in-game collectibles that help encourage the replayability of the game. The franchise mode has also been given a cleaner interface for how the coaches are handled, which is something I appreciate as 2000s was a bit convoluted to me. As for the visuals, the overall performance is on par with 2000, and the stadiums finally look a bit more detailed. The player models receive some alterations, and they are definitely proportioned better, but their jerseys seem a bit blurrier. But between this and everyone in Madden 2000 looking like William Perry, I'll take it as a positive update. On top of that, the animations seem improved as well. The game speed of 2000 was more than acceptable, and 2001 looks to have a slight upgrade here. Ironically, it is probably most noticeable during the celebrations after a touchdown. Let's take a look at the replay. As for the sound, there is even more commentary on offer here, but it becomes borderline annoying at times. The stick em versus gloves line just drove me crazy hearing it over and over and over, and now it lives rent free in my head. He was on the receiving end of a bullet there. You used to be able to put stick em on your hands to catch those balls. Now they got those gloves. But at the end of the day, more commentary was objectively a plus. Whether that be simply based on the variety or credit to the developers for better compressing the audio size without compromising the quality to ultimately get more crammed onto the cartridge. There was one thing about the audio or at least the overall presentation that surprised me though. When a new game starts, the theme music from Madden 64 plays. Not being a fan of that game, this was pretty jarring for me. I just don't see why they would put a three-year-old audio clip in here, especially considering just how far behind that game was already just three entries later, and it is in total contrast to the theme music from the menus. Now, I know we didn't talk much about Madden 2001, but for these sports games I try to stick with only what changes happen from one entry to the next, and Madden 2000 did far more to move the series forward than 2001 did. And at the time, EA even said 2001 would be their last on the console. But money talks and we ultimately saw Madden 2002 come out as well. Now, EA hadn't completely put the series on autopilot just yet, but I ultimately felt like I was playing almost the exact same game with a new user interface, which was really just cosmetic and the options therein remained the same. And given just how much more 2000 did to improve upon the previous entry, I really want to give it the win here. But I can't deny that the additional commentary lines and slightly improved in-game visuals here seal the win for 2001. 2000 gets bonus points for innovation, and 2001 gets docked for reusing the cheesy theme from three games ago. But 2001 is just ever so slightly better overall. As an aside, I think the series made huge leaps and bounds from 64 to 99 and then 99 to 2000. And those games came close to justifying their price tags. But I can't imagine as an adult paying for Madden 2001 and seeing just how little had changed. A huge part of that is probably the limitation of the N64 and PS1 hardware. The series was ready for its next evolution as 2001 was the inaugural PS2 release and the N64 version was no longer in the spotlight for the series. As far as stagnating with innovation, this would really set the tone for years to come with the series. Thanks again so much for watching this episode of the Great N64 Showdown. If you liked what you saw, please give us a like and subscribe to help move the series forward. I'd also love to hear any memories you had of the Madden series on N64, so please feel free to leave a comment with those stories and memories. Also, keep your eyes peeled for the next wild card matchup when we stay in football mode with NFL Quarterback Club 98 versus Quarterback Club 99.